A Lion locomotive in 5 inch gauge part 4, fitting new cylinder drain cocks and assembling a piece of track. The drain cock arrangement, unlike most miniature steam locomotives, is a bit odd. There isn't a linkage to the cab. You have to move each of the drain cocks levers independently and manually. Plus they are only fitted to the front of the cylinder covers, there aren't any at the rear. Looking at some photographs of the full size Lion locomotive, I noticed that the drain cocks were very fancy and looked like very small taps, inasmuch as when they were opened, the water and steam exited the cylinder in a downwards direction. And while I'm telling you this, I'm trying to remove the drain cocks that are currently fitted. These are very much standard drain cocks and they're designed to be operated with the lever. So first of all, after taking a bolt out of the cylinder, I remove the first one, and here I'm just trying a quick test fit of a 21st century steam drain cock. Available from my friend Chris Lockwood at 21st Century Steam. These days 21st Century Steam Company sell on eBay. I'm quite a fan of these drain cocks because they're one of the few drain cocks that do not leak. I've used them for a while and they always seem to be okay. Originally I thought I was going to fit them with the handle uppermost, but then I realised that the other cylinder was going to be a problem because the oil pipe's in the way. I'm going to have to do something about this lubricator because it is radically over oiling. I might even change this lubricator for a Jubilee fittings one because they are internally adjustable. But for the moment I'll have a play with this one I think. I'm fitting a fibre washer so I can get the outlet in the right position. Underneath the second drain cock that I'm going to remove there isn't a hexagon bolt it's a cheese head bolt, or a cheese head machine screw, whatever you wish to call it. I removed the drain cock without having to take this screw out, but I thought I would remove it before fitting the new drain cock, so I could wipe around the area to clean it. Here's the new 21st century steam company one in position, and as you can see now, both of the handles face downwards. And this is the best way to do it, I think. When I stand back and look at the engine from a distance, these have the appearance of the full size one. The handles pointing down could be mistaken for pipes from about 20 feet away. This is a good way to fit them also because the handles point down and there's less chance of burning your fingers as you operate the drain cocks when the locomotive is in steam. And if I've calculated correctly the oil pipe will clear the drain cock. So it's time to refit the oil pipe First of all to the cylinder end and then to the lubricator. Initially I tried it the other way around and it was really difficult to get the union nut to locate on the part that fits the steam chest. Once I fitted the pipe I bent it slightly just to square it up. I think it's time for a test run. In this close up of the parts under the front look how much the lubricator is moving on every revolution. It's moving so much it's a bit of a blur to the camera. I'll leave the locomotive running for a while, but don't go away, I'll be back very shortly. Quite a while back I bought two very long lengths of track and a set of sleepers. And in my typical fashion these days I lost the box of sleepers but then I remembered where I put them. And guess where I found them? In the cutlery tray, under a trolley, in the food and drink area of my recording studio. But I didn't put them there, that's why I couldn't find them. I bought this track kit online from a company called PNP Railways. The sleepers and shoes are all plastic and click together. This clip shows two lengths of the aluminium rail. I cut them using the bandsaw and cleaned up the ends on the polishing spindle so that they aren't sharp. And here I'm slotting the first sleeper and chair unit into position. There's definitely a knack to this and after I'd done two or three it became a much quicker job. I read the instructions and on the instructions it said that the distance between the centres of the sleepers should be 80 millimetres. But I did need to adjust them slightly so they fitted in the right place. 
It ended up with a gap of about two inches between the sleepers, and I tweaked it for a while until it looked OK. Here's the engine sat on the track on the bench in the workshop. When I first put the engine in position on the track, I thought, well, the track seems to look quite overscale. Don't forget, though, the full-size Lion was a very small engine. Steam locomotives got a lot bigger much later on. Another reason, though, is the track is made from bright aluminium. And also, if you look at the sleepers, they're far too thick. They're about the size of the sleepers as you would get them to put them in your garden if they were full size. Normally, railway sleepers in both model sizes and full size are almost buried by the ballast. For now, I've put the locomotive on the windowsill in my lounge. But when I get some of the other jobs out of the way, I'll be revisiting this. It's good to be able to look at it, though, when I'm watching TV and there's a particularly boring part on the programme. And that's it for this episode. As usual, stay safe and well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.